Welcome to this webinar, the second webinar in the series of Milk Taxi webinars. Today we will talk about how to feed milk with a milk taxi. Like with the first webinar, when we were talking about preparing of milk with a milk taxi and uh, following the features of Smart Mix, um, we are going to talk here about the do's and don'ts with a milk taxi when it comes to feed calves. So just let's uh, jump right into it and um, I hope you enjoy the, this webinar. Before you start feeding your calves, you might ask yourself some questions. Uh, and one of these questions is quite important. Um, how do I maintain the right temperature when I'm feeding my calves once the milk is prepared? Uh, another question is, um, yeah, what if I need to carry extra milk uh, for, for special calves, like calf with the colostrum or electrolytes or whatever? What possibilities do we have there? Um, what other points I need to consider before feeding my calves, how to set the right amount of milk with a milk taxi. And last but not least, I'm going to talk about Smart ID and how that makes the life easier when it comes to calf feeding. So question number one, uh, the right milk temperature. And here we can rely a little bit on the first webinar. Um, the milk taxi has a heating element incorporated and keeping the, the milk to the right uh, temperature. Um, and I can tell you that once the lid is closed, the milk taxi maintains the temperature rather well, even in winter. So for example, if we're talking about temperatures around freezing, uh, zero degrees Celsius to minus five or whatever, um, the milk taxi will keep its temperature um, yeah, for quite some time. There might be a temperature drop of one to two degrees within the first 15 minutes, but really not more than that. Um, but in winter, there's another problem, and that problem um, comes up when you're filling your warm, warm milk into the ice-cold buckets. Uh, and of course, then you will have a temperature drop. And of course, I would recommend um, to make the milk a little bit warmer in the winter time uh, than the scheduled feeding temperature. And I'm going to show you how that works on the milk taxi. So let's start the first, the first video. You can activate the heating by pressing the heat button. Um, and if you would like to increase the temperature now from 40 to 43 degrees, just um, skip the temperature up with the upper um, key and um, confirm with the OK button. Uh, if that was a little bit too fast, I'm going to show this to you again. So start the heating. Now the milk taxi is heating. Increase the temperature with the other key button. Confirm with OK and your new temperature is set. It's really, really easy. Um, there's not more to this than that. Okay, some of you might think, um, yeah, that might be all okay, but um, I'm really coming from a cold area um, somewhere in northern eastern Europe, North America, that uh, the weather can be really harsh. Um, and here I agree, maybe it's good to give the milk taxi some little bit extra insulation. And uh, yeah, from this year on, we have a solution for that. I'm going to show this to you quickly. Our milk taxi cover that one gives extra insulation and uh, I'm going to demonstrate here how fast this actually is mounted to the milk taxi uh, you just put the cover around the milk taxi uh, and that gives extra protection so the milk taxi will maintain its temperature for longer than just this 15 minutes but like I explained please keep the lid closed as long as possible because there you will lose most of your temperature rather fast. Okay, nice and fancy as I think, huh? So I hope you like that. 
Okay, now the next question is how do I, um, how am I able to carry extra liquid to my calves with a milk taxi? And you can see this here on that example already. So we have a holding frame for milk churns um, in the front of the milk taxi. That's an, an option on the milk taxi. Not all of your milk taxis will have that feature. Um, and uh, here in the next uh, small video i'm just showing you how to use that so normally it's lifted up so that's not in the way and you can easily handle flip it down put your buckets there your milk churns or whatever you call it um, and you can put a smaller container right inside it um, the smaller container is really practical if you only have a little bit a little amount of milk to carry um, so that holds about three liters of colostrum. And what we would recommend is just to put some warm water in the large uh, milk churn, put the, put the small container with the colostrum inside, and that keeps the milk inside the small container nice and warm. There's also the possibility to do it the other way around. If you need a larger amount of colostrum, like 15, 20 liters or whatever, um, you can put your warm colostrum in the large uh, churn and then put hot water into the small container and put the hot water right into the, uh, into the warm uh, milk so that um, that will heat the milk for longer so that even in winter when it's cold, uh, the temperature in the colostrum is, is easily maintained. Uh, so that's a quite nice small feature when it comes to bring milk to your calves. Okay, so that was just the first um, introduction uh, about um, how to yeah, provide warm milk to your calves. And now I'm going to talk about the possibilities uh, to set different feeding amounts with a milk taxi because most of your milk taxis will be equipped with a dosing unit. And here I will show you how that actually works. The milk taxi comes, uh, if it comes with a pump, you have the possibility to program nine different dosing steps. And you can move from one step to the other with the uh, arrow up and down keys and just choose whatever temperature you would like to have. Um, and of course, these, t these quantities can be changed. And you do this in the home menu. Press the house button, the home button, put in the code 683. You've seen that in the last uh, uh, webinar already. Go down to dosing levels, choose the level you would like to change, activate the value with OK, and then change the value. If you want to get rid of one, you just uh, go down to zero and then um, it will disappear from the list. So here, for example, we have eight quantities. If you want to get rid of the 1.6 as well, again here, go to zero, confirm, and now you can see that we just have seven. So one has disappeared. So you are able to reduce the amounts of feet um, in your in your system. Uh, in, your, in your program to only the ones which you actually need to feed your calves. So, and how does it then work to, to dose it out? Uh, I'm going to show this in the next video. You, you just choose your, your quantity you want to feed your calves at. Um, go to that level, like four liters. Take your dosing arm, press the button um, in the handle in order to release the milk flow and it will dose out exactly the four liters in your buckets and it will automatically stop. So quite easy, very straightforward. Choose the quantity you want in the display, press the dosing um, button, and then you're able to dose out the milk. Okay. There can be a situation that you have chosen the wrong amount and uh, it will the, the pump will run too long and you would like to interrupt the feeding. Um, also, that is possible. Uh, so here in this example, you can see on the right-hand side, 
um, I'm just starting the pump with a, a button uh, and if you press it a second time the pump will stop. Uh, so maybe we just repeat it because it was rather quick. Uh, have a look at the left hand, uh, uh, the right hand side of the of the picture. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, just have a look here on the right hand side. I'm starting the milk flow right now and if I press it a second time the milk flow will stop. So just press the pump button again and that works. Okay, you can see on the handle that there's a small black container or black box right next to the to the handle where I I'm holding the dosing gun. Um, that one is um, it's our remote control and some of your milk taxis will have that remote control and I would like to show you how that actually works. The remote control gives us the possibility um, yeah, to overcome certain distances from the milk taxi to the hatches. So very often you're not able to get with your milk taxi right beside the hutch and in that case um, uh, a long hose with the dozing uh, with a remote control can help. I'm just showing how that actually works. You just step beside, you're choosing the quantity with the plus button and uh, doze out the milk with the other button there. And once it's finished, you guys just go back uh, to the next calf. Again, this was rather quick. I'm going to repeat that once again. So you choose your quantity with the upper uh, upper button. Yeah. So that's that's the first step. So here we you can set between these nine different dosing steps, whatever you have programmed. Uh, so the number in there is not uh, showing you the the amount you're going to dose, but that's the number of the dosing level. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Once you've chosen that, you can press on the lower button and then uh, dose out the amount you would like to feed to your calves. So quite easy, straightforward working style. Another small thing which is really handy, uh, if you have a lot of buckets and a lot of calf, uh, calves in the row to feed, um, you can flip out the dosing arm in the, in the support here on the side and just pass the milk taxi, uh, pass the hatches with the milk taxi. Uh, and once you arrive there, you just press the button in the uh, handle, doze out the amount and you move to the next one. So you don't even need to keep the dosing arm in your hand. Uh, you're very free with working if you're if you're doing it that way. So a small thing which is uh, which is quite handy as well. So you might think about um, yeah, what about the programming on the dosing quantities? Isn't that uh, something which is quite complicated? Uh, as you've seen, no, it's not. But I would recommend you uh, recommend to calibrate them every once in a while. No? So let's say every uh, four to six weeks, just to make sure that the flow, the milk flow is always right and consistent. And I'm going to show you how to do this calibration now. So you need to go to the uh, home menu again here, um, code 683 once again, and then you go down all the way to calibration. Sorry for this being in German, but uh, here you have the pump volume. You press OK. And now you need to have a, have a small container, 3 to 4 liters, maybe 5 liters or whatever, and just press the OK button. And uh, finally, you measure the amount of milk which you, which you find there, which is here exactly 3 liters, so that's spot on. That's quite good. Um, and then you're able to change the amount here. So just press the upper key um, to the right amount. And finally, last but not least, confirming this with OK. So, and uh, all of a sudden your setting is, uh, is done right. Um, 
just two tips which I would like to give you when you do the calibration. Always do it on the same height with a dozing arm like you would feed your calves. Because there can be a variation in milk flow when you have the dozing arm lower or higher than on your calibration level. So, uh, and the, the reason for that is increased or decreased uh, milk pressure. So the higher you, you lift your dozing arm, the less pressure, um, uh, yeah, the less milk flow you will have. Uh, the lower you put it, the more milk flow will, will arrive in the, in the bucket. It is, it sounds dramatic, but it's actually not. So we're talking about a variation of maybe three, four percent or whatever. So, but if you keep um, the dozing arm on the same level, like uh, the filling height, you should be on the same side. Uh, another point, which is very important on calibration, um, there can be a difference in milk flow depending on the filling level of the tank. And I explained that in the first webinar already. So when the milk taxi is completely full, there's more pressure from the liquid in the tank on the pump, and the pump will slightly dose out more milk than you've programmed. If the tank is almost empty, there's less pressure on the pump, and it will dose out slightly less than you have programmed. Also, that is not a big variation. We're talking about three, four, five percent here as well. So that doesn't sound a lot, but maybe that's the reason why the calves at the beginning of your calf shed, where you always start to feed, they always do better than the calf in the rear, who always receive the last amount of milk. So here we recommend you um, to do a calibration with a half full tank and uh, just to uh, um, level out the arrow uh, a little bit. If you connect your, or if your milk taxi is equipped with a smart mix feature, um, then this arrow is not a problem for you because smart mix will uh, know how much liquid is in the tank and it will correct this arrow because it knows um, how much pressure is on the pump and there will be a correction in the calculation of the dosing. So, and I think that's quite, quite straightforward. Okay, so that's um, how you would uh, normally program and work with your milk taxi, uh, with a standard uh, milk taxi with a, with a pump feature. But I said already, um, we also should talk about a possibility to yeah, do the feeding a little bit more accurate. Uh, and for that, we have a feature in the program which is called Smart ID. So, and Smart ID is solving a lot of problems when it comes to feed calves. Uh, so, uh, on a lot of farms, we have a variation in personnel feeding calves in the morning and in the evening. So, sometimes there's a question, um, uh, so sometimes you question yourself, how much milk should that this specific calf receive? Huh? What's the age of the calf and what is the feeding status of this calf? Um, and uh, yeah, especially with different personnel on the farm, that can, can be quite chaotic. Huh? So even if you leave notes or information on the boxes or whatever. Um, so in here, calf, uh, Smart ID will help. Smart ID is a, a radio frequency uh, system which identifies the calf boxes. Um, and by identifying these calf boxes, we are able to feed the calves according to a feeding curve, which we're able to set in the program. And I would like to show you how a feeding curve like this would look like. So here we have our program again. Um, go to Smart ID, and there you can you are able to go to the feeding curve. Um, choose one out of six different feeding curves, which is quite a lot, I know. But uh, yeah, so we have possibilities to do that. And I would just like to explain you what you what you see here. Uh, so so you have a feeding curve like you've probably seen on automatic calf feeders already. 
So here we start with a low amount, six liters per day for the younger calves, going up to eight liters. Uh, that's the B quantity, eight liters. Um, and um, yeah, after E, that's 40 days, we start to wean the calves. And with 60 days in this example, these calves are weaned. Uh, so uh, just with this six parameters, you are able to program a very nice feeding curve. Um, and these are quantities per day. Um, and uh, you're also setting the numbers of feedings per day with your calves. Um, so uh, then the milk taxi will calculate automatically how much milk needs to be dis distributed during a feeding process. So just showing you how you're going to change one of these values. Um, you just go to the value you like to change, activate it with OK. And then with the arrow up and down keys, you're able to set a new uh, amount. Uh, so now we start here with 10 liters, uh, confirm with OK, and here you see a new feeding curve is programmed. You find that under feeding curve, smart ID. So a really nice, uh, nice feature, nice tool. So this is how to program feeding curves. What actually will you see when you feed calves with smart ID? And that's here on the next video. So you're passing your, your calves. And um, once it's identified, you will see here calf number 12. It's uh, supposed to get uh, 3.5 liters. It's three days of age and feeding curve number one. Um, you just move over to the bucket, uh, press the button, and then it will dose out the three and a half liters as you have preset. So there you really don't need to leave any notes or um, any yeah, sticky notes on the calf boxes or mark them with different colors buckets where everybody um, yeah, can really figure out what kind of amount is linked to what kind of colored bucket. So um, Smart ID will give you the possibility to uh, yeah, make feeding much easier even if you have different people in the team. Um, but yeah, we get some feedback uh, about that, that people think, yeah, but I don't want, uh, would not like to leave everything uh, by the milk taxi. Huh? So if the computer just tells me uh, what, how I should work, maybe that's a little bit scary. I can tell you that the person who is feeding the calf has the last, um, uh, has the last choice. So he or she decides how much milk this calf should get. Because as you can see here, um, so the calf is identified with three and a half liters. And if you believe the amount is not okay and you would like to feed more or less to this calf, you still have the possibility. So the amount which comes up here is just a suggestion. You can change it to the new quantity press the button and then dose it out. Huh? So for example, if a calf has diarrhea um, and you don't want to give the full amount, huh? you just feed one and a half, two liters to this calf, um, that is always always possible. Huh? So the last, uh, the last decision is being made by the person who is feeding the calves. I think that is really, really important. Just a word to the transponders, which are connected here on the on the hatches. They, they you can see a rather large number here. There's a transponder uh, card inside, which reads the number, uh, and you are able to interrupt the information flow um, if you pull up the lib uh, the lever. Um, the milk taxi will not identify this box, and I think this is quite handy in situation, for example, when there is no calf inside the box or the calves are weaned um, and you don't want them to be displayed in the screen, uh, just pull that red lever up and um, you can also visual, visually see this, so that this calf is not going to be fed. And also the milk taxi knows this calf is not going to be fed. Yeah, question always comes up um, 
uh, what about my uh, if I want to feed uh, groups of calves? So everybody understands the the principle with the individual hutches, but Smart ID works with groups as well. Um, in this example, I I can show you on this slide. I can show you a few screenshots of um, the programming on individual boxes uh, on, on uh, different boxes. So in this example, for uh, here we have a box with one calf inside and with one bucket. Uh, this calf is three days of age, feeding curve number one. So in this example, there's one calf in the box. But you can also dedicate a certain box to a multiple numbers of calves, like here, three calves. So we have three calves, and all of these three calves have an individual bucket. So um, the milk taxi will now calculate the amount of the calf of these three calves uh, for this feeding, and it will ask you for this box to start feeding the milk three times. So instead of only once, uh, you need to press the button three times. Another example is that in this box you have three calves, but only one bucket. So what does this, this mean? So this is a situation where you have one of these milk bars or whatever with three teats, five teats, seven teats, or however. Um, so you can tell Milk Taxi how much calves, how many calves are in that box, and then you can tell the milk taxi there's only one bucket and the, the milk taxi will then um, multiple all the amount of milk and dose that, uh, dose that milk within one feed. So you have the possibility to feed either individual boxes with calves or multiple boxes with calves. Okay, so before we come to the end of this uh, short presentation, um, I have one more uh, feature which I would like to show you uh, because Smart ID comes also with a nice uh, information tool. Um, and um, in order to use that, you need to uh, connect the Milk Taxi with the management system Calf Guide. Calf Guide is a um, calf management system which allows you to yeah, record your feeding data of your calves, the history of calves. Also, it allows you to control your milk taxi as well, your automatic calf feeder. So Calf Guide is basically a program for all home and lower feeding equipment. And if you have Calf Guide uh, connected to your milk taxi, you also have the possibility to, uh, to leave information and notes for the manager, for example. So this works like this. So you, you have a calf here, calf number 12, and you would like to leave an information. You press the arrow key on the left, um, and you choose one out of six nodes, which you are able to preset. Uh, so the milk taxi doesn't have the possibility uh, to type in information, but you can preset information uh, six information which where you can choose from one and this information will be sent to the farm manager right after um, feeding when when feeding is done well, so then uh, that means that the person who's actually feeding the calf doesn't need to be the person who is curing sick calves for example maybe these are different people uh, but they all communicate through calf guide to one management system yeah. So, and uh, a very nice feature also is that before the next feeding, on the next shift, um, the person who is then feeding calf, which can be a different one, will receive an information for this given calf that this, for example, had diarrhea on the last feeding and asking the person to check the status of the calf and then confirm is diarrhea still present or is the calf okay right now? Uh, it also can leave a note here. So, and then the farm manager or veterinarians, they can really check um, uh, the status of their calves at any given time. I think that's a really nice add-on. Uh, like I said, you need to have a connection to Calf Guide uh, to use this feature, 
but um, very, very helpful, especially if you're working with different uh, employees on your farm. Last but not least, um, just want to show you a milk taxi in action, how that actually works in real life. So you pass from one calf to the other and you see uh, there's the identification coming up here. We have calf number 39. It's uh, 23 days of age, receiving 3.5 liters. Um, the next calf is a little bit older, um, 43 days of age. Calf number 40 gets only 2.9 liters. So, and uh, yeah, last but not least, I think the next one is even a little bit older, uh, 52 days and it's almost weaned 1.6 liters. Um, so and this is how easy calf feeding can be with Smart ID. So don't leave anything by chance. Just make sure you have your um, you have your right information and good communication within your team using really modern technology.